Welcome to the first lecture of Dynamics of Machines. To understand Dynamics of Machines, you need to first understand what is a machine. And to understand the machine, we have to start with the basic component which is known as link or element. The connection between the two link is always a joint or a pair. But this pair will always be a kinematic pair if the relative motion between the link is a constrained motion. If all the links are connected in such a way such that first link is connected to the last link in order to have a closed chain and if all the relative motion in this closed chain are constrained then such a closed chain is known as kinematic chain. So kinematic chain is basically a constrained chain. And to use this chain, we have to fix one of its link. And as soon as we are fixing one of its link, it will be called as the mechanism. Mechanism is something which can give you the desired output with respect to the given input. And when you are going to utilize this mechanism, then only you will call it as the machine. And it is very necessary in the design of a machine mechanism to know the manner in which the forces are transmitted from input to the output so that the component of the machine can be properly sized to withstand the stresses that are developed. So now come to the second question. What is dynamics of machines? So dynamics of machines is a branch or a part of theory of machines. So this subject basically talks about how the component of a machine is moving under the influence of a particular force. For that, we need to first understand that what is a static and dynamic force analysis. To understand the static force analysis, we need to take the example of a crane. Now suppose there is a crane which is lifting heavy load and transporting it from one point to the another point. Now this crane is also having some its internal components which are moving, which is having motion. And as per Newton's law, whenever a component is having acceleration, it will create an inertia force. So if you can neglect this inertia force in comparison to the externally applied force, you will call the analysis as the static force analysis. However, if the effect of inertia force is considerable in comparison to the externally applied force, then you have to take that into account. So static force analysis is something which is neglecting the inertia force effect of internal components and in dynamic force analysis, we consider the inertia effect due to the internal component. There are basically two types of forces acts on a machine component. First one is the constraint force and second one is the applied force. So constraint forces is a pair of action and reaction forces which constrain two connected bodies to behave in a particular manner. As the constraint forces at a mechanical contact occurs in a pair, they have no net force effect on the system of bodies. However, for an individual body isolated from the system, only one of each pair of constraint forces has to be considered. And applied forces are the forces which are applied through the direct physical or mechanical contact. However, forces like electric, magnetic and gravitational are applied without actual physical contact. So after understanding the constraint forces and applied forces, we need to understand what is static equilibrium. So what is static equilibrium? Suppose there is a body and if the body is at rest, it tends to remain at rest and if in motion, it tends to keep the motion in the same way. And if we want to check the condition for the static equilibrium, what we need to do, we need to check the two conditions. First, the vector sum of all the forces acting on that body has to be zero. And the second, the vector sum of all the moment at any arbitrary point must be zero. If these two conditions are satisfying, then we will say that this body belongs to the static equilibrium. If not, the body is not in a static equilibrium. Now we will understand the condition for equilibrium of two and three force member. A member under the action of two forces will be in equilibrium if the forces are of the same magnitude and the forces must act along the same line and in opposite directions. 
So if any member is under the influence of two forces, we will check these three things. That the forces are of same magnitude, they are acting along the same line and they are in the opposite direction. If these three conditions are satisfied, then that component will be in equilibrium under the influence of two force. So now the question comes, how to identify that which member or element is a two force member? So if an element has a pin or hinge support at both ends and carries no load in between, it is called as a two force member. These elements can only have two forces acting upon them at their hinges. If only two forces acts on a body that is in equilibrium, then they must be in equal magnitude collinear and opposite in sense. This is known as two force principle. The two force principle applies to any member of a structure that has only two forces acting on it. This is easily determined by simply counting the number of places where the forces act on that member. Remember the reactions are considered to be forces. If they act in two places, it is a two force member. Now one point you need to note down about the two force member that the most but not all two force members are straight. Straight elements are usually subjected to either tension or compression. Those members of other geometries will have bending across or inside their sections in addition to tension or compression. But the two force principle is still applies. There are no exceptions. Some common examples of two force members are columns, studs, hangers, braces, pin truss element, chains and cable state suspension system. Now for a member under the action of three forces will be in equilibrium if the resultant of all the three forces is zero and the line of action of the forces intersect at a point and that point is known as point of concurrency. The three forces interact with the structural element in a very specific manner in order to maintain the equilibrium. If a three force member is in equilibrium and the forces are not parallel, they must be concurrent. Therefore, the line of action of all the three forces acting on such a member must intersect at a common point. A three force member is often an element which has a single load and two reactions. These members usually have forces which cause bending and sometimes additional tension and compression. The most common example of a three force member is a simple beam or the lamp example also has a three force member as a part of its structural system. In the next lecture, we will understand how to draw free body diagrams and how to apply superposition. And we will also try to solve a problem of static equilibrium.